Hello guys! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jana and I'm really glad that you are here. Um, last time when I recording video, uh, I mentioned that in the next time, so today in this video, I will show you and tell you much more about Lands of Evershade uh, because now I'm after playthrough. Um, I play a few adventures uh, in this prototype version of this board game. So. Today in this video I will show you, tell you much more uh, about whole world, about storyline, about mechanics and my impressions after playing. So uh, if you are curious, I hope so, <laughs> I invite you to this video and I hope you like it. If so, it will be really, really great if you leave a like. And now let's get started. Our adventure in Lands of Evershade starts on the first sheet which uh, depicts the city, as you can see. So we start the gameplay at the healing house where after our earlier adventures, we wait with other characters to be healed by a local healer. However, a mysterious person appears in the healing house uh, and this injured man is taken in by the healer in front of us. And as you can see, by the goal of our adventures played out on this sheet, we are to catch the murder. So quite quickly, therefore the action in this game begins. How we will move the murder miniatures around this map is determined by the special rules described on this sheet. In this example, we will roll the dice and the result of the dice will determine whether we will move the miniature so to a space with a triangle or a circle. And we as heroes will try to catch up with him or perhaps take uh, maybe a shorter road to the city gate to cut off his escape road. So we place the city map sheet on the left side of the adventure track and on it we place a miniatures that represent our entire team. Here a moment later, uh, a miniatures of uh, this mysterious murder we want to catch will also appear. Basically, the first few adventure in Lands of Evershade provide an, some kind of introduction for players. It's kind of a tutorial to help us learn the game uh, and its rules. It works similarly to Gloomhaven, Just of the Lion, uh, where already while playing we learn more rules and new mechanics that are in the game. So when we manage to catch up with the murder, uh, we will move to the second board, uh, to the combat sheet, where we will fight a combat with the murder and his severant that he will summon. Below that is the battle area, this is where we will deploy the miniatures uh, in a moment, and at the bottom of the board uh, of this sheet is an extra bonus in, in form of an action card, which the heroes will be able to use during uh, the ongoing combat. So we place this sheet on the right side of the adventure track, uh, while the city board is still laid out on the left side. On the combat board, we place the miniatures of our team's heroes and the enemies. All the necessary information, how we should prepare the combat board, uh, where to set up the miniatures, what enemy action cards to take and how to prepare the, uh, the back of initiative tokens are described in detail in a paragraph and everything should be laid out based on them. So next we will prepare a bag of initiative tokens. In the paragraphs, we will find information on what amount of given tokens at the start should be put in the bag. In a moment, starting the battle, we will draw a random token and it will indicate which side will activate, whether enemies, black token, or one of the hero, white token. So now here's a look at this mystery killer. This is a card with his statistic and the bottom indicated are the, the cards from the uh, activation deck uh, to be drawn. In this case, uh, there are only two cards, but uh, as the game progresses, there will be more difficult opponents uh, who will have more such different cards. So at the moment of activation of this enemy, we'll draw one such card and it will determine how this murder, how this killer will behave. 
at that moment. Returning to the stat card, uh, here we also have a certain level of his life for this character. Here is depend on the number of characters playing and also uh, the difficulty level of this enemy, which we will need during the test. As I mentioned, the mysterious murder will summon uh, himself several minions, such is his support. As you can see, these are enemies easy to defeat because it only take one wound to kill such a one. And how they will behave and what they will do during their activation is determined in this case one activation card. What is important in case of activating enemies is uh, that their stat cards are lined up according to the information in a paragraph. So when a black activation token is selected, it's draw uh, from the back, only the first enemy should be activated, but the next one does not activate. And when in another turn we select, we draw the activation token of enemies, again, the next enemy in the row is activated. So during activation, we will activate the enemies one at a time, one by one in successive turns in order in a row. As for what happens on the combat board itself, so in short, we will move miniatures, uh, both enemies and heroes, uh, depending on uh, who will activate, that is, which initiative token uh, will uh, pull from the back, and low movements are vertically and horizontally, you can't move diagonally and there is no adjacent space diagonal, but heroes can pass through each other. Some various obstacles uh, may appear on different boards, different combat boards uh, that can provide cover from the characters. And what range we have when attacking is determined uh, by the weapon card you use. Here I show you the card of the bow. This is a range weapon, so you will attack at a distance with it. And in this case, I have to roll the dice uh, doing an agility test. So right away, a few words about how tests are done in this game. First of all, I check the difficulty level on the cards of the opponent I'm shooting at. This minion has a difficulty level of 6, so after rolling, I have to get this or higher scores. How many dice I roll is determined uh, by my level of the particular attribute I'm testing. In this case, I take 3 dice. So I roll them and check what results I have. Here I have a 7 and uh, with it I inflict a wound on my opponent. In addition, sometimes using different weapons um, will add some damage inflicted on the weapon token, uh, as in this case. So I inflict two wounds uh, in this situation, although I don't need as many because my opponent is weak, one wound is uh, enough to kill him so he dies. When you make tests while making choices, we choose a hero who will make the test of the one who has the highest level of the attribute being tested. In addition, in this situation, the keywords uh, that are written on the tokens uh, of races, professions or skills are very important because any hero, even the one taking the test uh, who has a matching keywords, can draw an extra die and draw it during the test, providing a better chance of successes. Finally, guys, before you rest, uh, let me tell you a few words about the rest phase, which is described in special rules on the map sheet. In different parts of our adventure, uh, it will have slightly different roles. So when trying the rest phase, place a camp board on the table. Here we'll insert camp cards into special slots, which will provide us with variable actions. In the corpse of the game, we will additionally change this card, develop them, because for example, such an uh, ordinary shuttler will become a tent with another possible actions to perform in it. So here, for example, uh, we will be able to rest, sleep, and if we get a higher score in this uh, example, seven uh, or more after rolling the dice, even heal from a wound. Note that uh, on some 
cup cards, uh, there are restrictions on the number of characters that can stand there. Because here, in the course of playing the camp phase, we will place miniatures of our characters uh, so uh, that they can perform the actions from the given cards. And now that you know the dangerous, uh, it's time to find out what possible actions each character has at his disposal. So, first of all, they can move by as many spaces as the value of characters' movement mark on their board. In this example, my elves moves up to six spaces. The next aviable actions for heroes is, of course, to attack. And what kind of attack? It will be depends on what weapons we are equipped with and what action cards we decide to use. I show you the card associated with the bow, which will provide a range attack. So in order to attack, I have to make an agility test, uh, drawing as many dice as the level of this attribute uh, for my hero. So if I have success, I can inflict wounds and in addition, this weapon ignores the enemy's armor. Importantly, after using the card, action card, put it back with the dark side up uh, on the hotbar. And when the rant ends, all used cards in Heroes refresh and uh, can be used again. Alternatively, you can use Fate token uh, to be able to refresh a particular action card earlier. Additionally, the Fate token is uh, also used to re-roll the result of the dice when performing tests. Importantly, while one hero is attacking, other who are not playing their activation now can provide support and then activate their support cards from the hotbar. And now uh, I will show you uh, another example for a test uh, for an action card that is available on the combat board. Any of the heroes can use this action. So here we are going an intelligence test, that is we have to check the level of this attribute and draw as many dice as the intelligence level of our hero. In my case is again three dice. In addition, with this test we include a Divinum dice. What kind of dice it is? This is specified on the character boards. In this test you need to have at least two successes to inflict some wounds and success is when we have value of 10 or higher because uh, this is the difficulty level of this test. In addition, any score of 12 on the dice will give us two successes because this is the highest value on a dice and always counts double. On the other hand, the result of the Divinum dice should be just added to the sum of successes we obtained. Each time we get a value of 1 during the test, we get a fate token for that. Let me remind you that by spending it, we can reroll the dice and refresh the action cards used earlier. And on this occasion, I will say right away about terror. Let's see. When you fail the test, you get terror as some kind of punishment. This means that your character's aura is weakened. And when you collect four such terror tokens, then you get a wound. And I just add that in this game, any character who has three wounds and is about to receive another one, die. And that is end the adventure. You can continue it, but you will have to create a new character. So terror in this game is uh, is the equivalent some kind of fear, danger, maybe madness. But during the game, in course of your adventure, you can get boons. So as you can see, you will be able to raise the levels of your attributes, which determines how many dice you have uh, available for testing. The more of them, the better the chances of successes. Let me start by explaining what Lands of Evershade really is, because it's not a regular board game. So Lands of Evershade is some kind of hybrid. It's uh, combining a uh, classic RPG game with uh, characteristic elements like 
a huge storyline with possibility to create characters with many um, dice rolling for test with elements characteristic for board games uh, like map tales, like uh, tokens, players board, uh, action cards, etc. Okay, first let's talk about player's handbook. As you can see, this huge book introduced the whole world of Evershade and uh, this book uh, helps you to create a hero. Uh, in this player book, uh, you can find detailed description about races, uh, classes, about professions. You can find information about bestiary mythologies, uh, gods and many, many more. Basically, it contains a lot of useful information and is richly illustrated, making it easier to understand. Uh, right now, this prototype book has just over 100 pages, um, but it will have uh, nearly 300 pages. So, wow, it's really impressive. And you have to know that it's very well described and illustrated, helping to to understand important aspects like talking to residents when making decisions during the game. However, if someone doesn't want to read it all, it's okay because uh, you don't need to read this handbook to play this board game. Now let's see who you can play as. Uh, in the prototype version of Lands of Evershade, there are four races, so we can play human, Alves like elves, uh, you can play dwarves like dwarves and Volgrim. And there will be many more races in the final version of this board game. Uh, so after choosing a race, you pick a class. And currently you can choose from paladin, hunter, druid and warrior, but more classes will be added later in a, a final version of this board game. And once you choose a class, you then select uh, some kind of specialization um, that uh, affects your abilities and most important equipment. So basically there are many many possible combinations as you can see. But what's really important is that the choice of race, class and specialization affects how your team performs in the game. Because each hero brings different skills to the team so it's really important for the characters to work well together. And you know, depending on how you create, how you build your team, uh, you will approach uh, challenges differently. Some challenges will be easier thanks to certain abilities, while others will require uh, a different strategy. Team compromission is crucial and influences how the game unfolds. You know, during the game I have a, a lot of situations, a lot of moments when one character's skill uh, aren't enough and you need to help for other players. So basically um, collaboration in this game is key and, and you know, using abilities well makes it easier to overcome challenges. It also gives um, a feeling to being part of a well-organized group where everyone has a role. You know, the team is strength and I love this because it captures the spirit of our adventure. You know guys, it's not a secret that in a role-playing game the story is the most important thing and in Lands of Evershade, for me, the story is the stronger part of this game. And for the start, you can feel, and I can tell, there is a skilled writer behind it. Because the narrative is really engaging. Uh, the world of Evershade, in my opinion, is full of details, making it easier to immerse yourself in it. Playing feels like diving into very interesting novel with surprising twists and every decision uh, reveals new aspects of the story and uh, side quest and richness to the game world. The story affects how the game unfolds. It sharps our choices and the adventures of our team. Maybe some of you know how I love exploring unknown worlds and to be honest, Land of Evershade satisfies this need 
perfectly because you know in my opinion this is a board game uh, where traveling to diverse landscapes discovering hidden places and uh, interacting with the environment other heroes uh, other characters are key elements each location in this board game has something unique to offer you. Uh, for dark forces to mysterious catacombs and the, for example, labyrinth streets of the city. Each spot attracts your attention and make you feel like you. You can find something new uh, at any moment. And you know, exploration here in this board game is not just moving from A to B. It's about discovering secrets. In Lands of Weathershade, uh, combat battles take place in really interesting locations. So whether exploring underground corridors or following paths, each area has its own board for encounters. And how you probably see now, the graphics uh, and change the atmosphere, these places and uh, immersion in the game. Additionally, some locations offers you extra actions, um, sometimes uh, special rules, uh, basically extra bonuses. Uh, and these bonuses uh, adding variety to combat and these bonuses can be surprising and it's really, really cool further. What more about combat system in this board game? Lands of Evershade uh, includes a random mechanics when uh, during the game, when we start the combat, uh, we draw a token from the back and um, and the token determine who turn it is uh, the enemy like in this example or the team and you know this adds more randomness and i personally prefer a system i don't know for example based on initiative because it allows for better planning and more control over battles I think that it's easy to see that I love deep atmospheres in, a, in a board games and probably um, it's easy to deduce what I'm going to say about atmospheres in Lands of Evershade. You know guys, I really love it when a game has a, a deep atmosphere to it and uh, there really it's a lot of it. Everything from the detailed world to the rich storyline to the illustration in a manual, in the cards, uh, in the map tales, and uh, basically game elements, you know, a player board, a miniatures, a cards, etc., builds a strong sense of immersion in, uh, in the world of Evershade. Every decision here, every test or uh, encounter with a new character, with an uh, enemy, uh, really makes you feel as uh, you are taking part in a really, really exciting um, adventure. Uh, this is not a game where we move from one stage to another just to pass a mission, just to pass a quest. Here, everything matters and affects uh, the development of the story and our team. I think that for those of you who uh, appreciate a, a strong narrative and atmosphere, this game will be perfect way to immerse yourself in a fantastic world full of mysteries and challenges. So in short, Lands of Evershade for me is a game that does everything to make uh, not just a play game but experience real adventure. While Lands of Evershade has a rich world and an engaging story, some players might find uh, the amount of text overwhelming. There are plenty of stories to discover which entails a lot of content to absorb. Personally, I love this kind of element in this type of game, but in the same time, I realize that it may not suit everyone, so I mention about it. During the game, we often jump between paragraphs, uh, paging through the pages. So when we find the right one, we read it. And again, the paragraphs refers us to another one and so on and so on. And this is the last enjoyable part of the game. I think I can say it's uh, sometimes uncomfortable and sometimes uh, this constant touring of pages for many of you 
can also be a nuisance as well. And as much as I'm not a fan of the application in the board games, I think that in this game, in this situation, it could make the gameplay much easier. Because when we constantly have to browse through paragraphs, the app could greatly speed up the process. And in addition, it could contain a variety of other useful information and make it easier to access detail of the plot or characters and, for example, contains a history of the decision we made. So it would certainly be a great addition to the game for those players who accept it. Lands of Evershade is not a game with complicated and elaborate mechanics. Most of what we have to do here, besides decisions that push us on way or, or the other in the adventure, are dice rolls for tests. In this game, the attributes of our characters are constantly being tested. For example, when we have to enter some tight passage, just roll for agility, or when knock down a door, for example, roll for strength, or when we have to convince someone to, to do something, roll for charisma or intelligence, and so on and so on. So this works just like in a classic RPG game. And for me, what's missing here is a bit more elements, a bit more uh, mechanics from modern board games. Maybe the building or some initiative system, mechanics which would introduce more tactics. Of course, on the other hand, the introduction of more advanced mechanics uh, could make the game even longer and more complicated. And this could discourage players who prefer simple solutions. So while I personally would see more complex mechanics here, because I know it would make it more fun for me, I understand that the current simplicity can be an asset because it makes the gameplay more accessible and faster for a large audience. And I think it's a deliberate effort by the publisher. It is worth remembering that when combining a board game with a role-playing game, like in Lands of Evershade, a lot of time is spent reading a plot and story. In a classic RPG game, this task is performed by the game master, but here this role is assumed by one of the players. So when the content is read, nothing happens on the board, on the, on the map tales, because the other players listen and immerse themselves in the story. And I mention about it because for some people who have a hard time getting into the atmosphere of the game, such moments may not seem dynamic or even tedious. And for the end, I wanted to mention saving the game state, which is, in my opinion, a very important element. Lands of Evershade is a long and elaborate game, so we will certainly often have to stop, uh, disassemble the components of this game and set up again when we will return to the game. I know that not everyone has the ability to leave the game unfold on the table for a long time, so the option to save progress our campaign becomes crucial. Unfortunately, at this stage of the prototype, uh, it's not yet clear how this will uh, ultimately be resolved. The publisher told me uh, that each player is to receive a lock table tray for all the tokens, cards and, uh, and markers um, so that they can place and store them there. But I don't know how this solution will work in practice because I haven't had a chance to test it. Lands of Evershade focuses on engaging story and uh, meaningful decisions that affect the gameplay. These elements attract me the most in this board game. The narrative, the atmosphere and the rich world, full of secrets that can really drown you in. And because I love deep storylining and the ability to uh, shape the plot with my choices, so this game is definitely for me. And as you've heard, the combat system doesn't quite convince me, but I hope that uh, there's still a chance for a change it to give more satisfaction for this part of uh, the gameplay to players like me. 
uh, it's not an uh, elaborate game in the sense of uh, complex mechanics. So some players um, may be a bit disappointed here. But on the other hand, this is definitely a title for those who are able and willing to let themselves be split away by the interactive story. So guys, if you want to play in a large and immersive and, and full of secrets and full of mystery story uh, role-playing game in a board game version, I think that uh, Lands of Evershade is definitely board game for you. Okay guys, it's all for me today. Thank you very much for watching and I hope that after watching this video uh, it will be easier to decide if Lands of Evershade is a board game for you. I hope so. Uh, don't forget to leave, um, leave me a like and if you want to uh, comment, the section comment below is for your disposal. Uh, thanks again and see you in next video. Bye!